Welcome back to our channel. Today, we're going to delve into a subject that affects us all. Vaccine side effects Vaccines have become one of the most powerful tools in modern medicine, preventing dangerous diseases and saving millions of lives every year. Vaccination is a global health and development success story, offering protection by working with our body's natural defenses to build immunity. Thanks to vaccines, we now have preventive measures against more than 20 life-threatening diseases, from diphtheria to COVID-19. Immunization is a key component of primary healthcare and an undeniable human right, ensuring healthier and longer lives for people of all ages. Before we dive into the topic, let's acknowledge that vaccines, like any medical intervention, can have side effects. But the critical question is whether the benefits of vaccination outweigh the potential risks. We'll explore both common and rare side effects, backed by scientific evidence and global health organizations' insights. So, join me on this journey as we unravel the world of vaccine side effects. Thank you for tuning in, and let's get started. Vaccines are designed to stimulate our body's immune system, which is our natural defense against harmful pathogens like viruses and bacteria. When we encounter a pathogen, our immune system launches a response to neutralize and eliminate it, protecting us from illness and disease. The immune system's response to a pathogen is facilitated by specialized cells and molecules, such as antibodies. Each pathogen contains unique subparts called antigens, and these antigens trigger the production of specific antibodies in response. You can think of antibodies as soldiers in our defense system, trained to recognize and combat one specific antigen. When we are exposed to a pathogen for the first time, it takes some time for the immune system to produce the specific antibodies required to fight it. In the meantime, we remain susceptible to becoming ill. However, once the antigen-specific antibodies are generated, they work alongside the rest of the immune system to destroy the pathogen and prevent the disease from spreading. Vaccines contain weakened, inactivated, or specific parts of the pathogen called antigens. When we receive a vaccine, it triggers a similar immune response as if we were exposed to the actual pathogen. However, the vaccine's version is not strong enough to cause the disease itself. Instead, it primes our immune system to recognize and remember the pathogen, creating a defense mechanism for future encounters. Some widely used vaccines include those against diseases like measles, mumps, rubella, polio, hepatitis B, influenza, and more. These vaccines have been extensively researched, tested, and proven to be safe and effective in preventing their respective diseases. It's important to note that some vaccines require multiple doses, given weeks or months apart. This is to ensure the production of long-lived antibodies and the development of memory cells. Further strengthening the body's immune response and memory against the specific disease-causing organism. Moreover, vaccines not only protect those who receive them but also contribute to community immunity, also known as herd immunity. When a significant portion of the population is vaccinated, it becomes challenging for the pathogen to spread. Providing protection to vulnerable individuals who cannot receive vaccines due to health conditions or other reasons. Stay tuned for the next part of our video series. And don't forget to subscribe to our channel for more science-backed content. Thanks for watching. A corona vaccination starts with an injection, typically in the shoulder. In the vaccines from BioNTech, Pfizer and Moderna, the injection contains RNA molecules inside lipid nanoparticles. These molecules enter the cell and are then released from that nanoparticle coat. Other vaccine types, for example those from AstraZeneca and Johnson & Johnson, are given as DNA inside another virus, which is not coronavirus. They are called viral vector vaccines. In these vaccines, the DNA strand continues into the cell nucleus, where your own DNA is also found. Here it is transcribed. That means that the information is copied from DNA to RNA and then exported out of the cell nucleus. 
From that point, the mechanism of the four vaccine types is again the same. Vaccine information is found as RNA ready for translation. RNA is actually supposed to be translated and made into your own proteins, but with vaccine RNA, the proteins found on coronavirus are made. They are called spike proteins. Spike protein gives coronavirus its shape and also its name, corona. It is that molecule that virus uses to gain access to the cells of your body. The spike protein is exported outside of the cell and there it is captured by an antigen presenting cell. It is then presented to a T cell, like this. When that happens, an immune reaction begins. An immune reaction is a complex interplay of cells being activated. Here, for example, it's a so-called B cell. Overall, the result will be that your body starts producing antibodies against spike protein. Without this prepared defense, we are easily infected with coronavirus. However, when the body and its immune system is prepared, it will quickly combat invading coronavirus.